so today we are going to have the discussion on technologies production systems and management for universal human order so if you recollect we have been discussing harmony at various levels that by discussing harmony at the level of individual then went for the discussion over family and then society nature and then we also talked about the harmony in the existence we talked about ethics in the previous lecture and now we are going to discuss about the next part that is when it comes to living and particularly when we are in education then we have to take decisions regarding technologies we have to in technologies we have to uh, teach technologies we have to implement technologies so how does this understanding help in the development of new technologies propagation of new technologies and also their right utilization similarly with the production systems and management so most of us are associated with teaching and we always are involved with in somehow uh, somehow or the other with new and new technologies and production systems and management models so can we have some guidelines based on this right understanding and right feeling this is something that we'll discuss and we'll also have a look at the developments that have been taking place in these dimensions in the past few centuries and how we envisage our future role with this new development yes so i'm going to talk about technologies production systems and management for universal human order so in the last lecture we discussed ethical human conduct and we had a look at two models of ethical conduct then we made an appraisal of the current scenario and proposed the way forward and now going further we'll discuss technologies production systems and management for universal human order in this lecture so if you recollect we had discussed two models of ethical conduct one was based on realization at the core and then its uh, expression in terms of universal human order and human tradition another model was in terms of like values policy and character which exhibits in our living so we had discussed about that now when we talk about the universal human order then we have a role to play and we can see that we all are co-explorers and this right understanding and right feeling is not developed in isolation isn't it we have to listen to the proposal so that we are able to get to know the reality we are able to get to have the correct uh, proposal about the reality and then we have to verify within and here also we can see that when i say verify within it is not just mulling over some idea or notion or hypothesis or theory it is reflecting on the natural acceptance so that may not be always be the case that we are able to directly reflect upon the natural acceptance so that does take time reflecting on the feeling and then reflecting on the natural acceptance now to help this we have to also live accordingly we have to validate the proposals in our living in our behavior and work and our behavior and work is a participation in the larger order that goes up to universal human order so going this way we are always a part of the system we have to participate in the system so on one hand i have to keep working for realization within to be able to see the relationship harmony and coexistence to be able to awaken to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization on one hand and on the other hand i have to participate in terms of and divided society universal human order and human tradition with that clarity we are going to talk about technologies and production systems and management now so when you talk about universal human order these three things have to be so when we talk about universal human order what does it essentially mean so first of all to have the clarity about the human goal living in a society can we have a common goal and that common goal again cannot be segmented fragmented it has to be all encompassing so we have to have the goal at the level of individual family society as well as nature or existence so every human being needs to have the right understanding and right feeling isn't it that becomes the foundation of harmony in the society in fact the society may be living in harmony but if i am not resolved within if i do not have the right understanding and right feeling within 
then I am not able to be happy within, even if the outside environment is harmonious, isn't it? You'll see that even if like we have some kind of uh, synergetic atmosphere in the department, but if there is some faculty who is not resolved within, then the other person may start feeling restless. What is happening? You know, because he or she might be used to some uh, activities which are not in sync with the synergetic atmosphere in the department. So when you talk about the society, ultimately I am there as a part of the society and I have to resolve within. Then only I can also feel happy looking at the harmony in the society. And I can be uh, a pillar of the harmony in the society, isn't it? So for example, if there are people sitting and nobody is making a noise, everybody is sitting silently. Now, if there is no harmony within me, then there is noise in me. And then I start feeling restless. What is happening? Nobody is shouting. Nobody is you know, uh, passing a joke or a comment. Everybody is sitting silently. What is happening? It's so boring. Does it happen? Even if there is harmony outside, but if there is no harmony inside, I start feeling restless. Is it true? You can respond in the chat box. <laughs> You'll find it happening most of the time, isn't it? So at the core is my own harmony. And that is possible only with right understanding guide feeling. Now, when it comes to family, then every member of the family has to have right understanding. And then we have to have more than required physical facilities so that we are able to fulfill the needs of the family. So every family needs to have the feeling of prosperity. Now, when the families are having the right understanding and uh, the feeling of prosperity, then only you are able to participate in each other's happiness. We are able to work for mutual happiness. And that ensures fearlessness, trust in the society. And when we are able to live together happily, then we are able to participate in the harmony in the nature. Isn't it? So it's all encompassing. It's very comprehensive. But at the core is my own understanding, my right understanding, isn't it? Now, when I'm able to see this goal, then I have to have a program to fulfill this goal. And there are five dimensions. This is one formulation, not the formulation. We had discussed another formulation in a previous uh, monthly keynote lecture where we talked about eight dimensions. So here we are talking about five dimensions. So education sanskar is one dimension health and self-regulation, production work, justice, preservation, exchange and storage. Now, working in these dimensions, we are able to work for fulfillment of the human goal. And we had seen how you know, we are able to do this. And then there is scope for expansion from family to the world family. So with right understanding, right feeling, and the feeling of prosperity, ensuring justice in our mutual relationships, we are able to ensure family order. And this is something which you might be able to see in your own family, isn't it? It may not be the case that others are going by your ways or you are following their ways. But once we start exploring, we are able to see the natural acceptance. Okay, what can be called as the way, you know, the way to go ahead in life. So it's neither my way or your way, it is the the way. Uh, and that is the natural acceptance. So everybody gradually starts aligning to the natural acceptance. And then there is order in the family. Now that order in the family expands to the family cluster. Whosoever comes to your family and discusses about any problems, you are able to share the right solution. You are able to share that ultimately you have to ensure right understanding, right feeling within you. Ultimately, you have to see the intention of the other. In place of doubting the intention, you have to see the intention and then work to be complementary. So gradually this family order expands to the family cluster order and then cluster of family cluster, which can be called as a village or a community or a colony. And then it goes to higher orders. We're able to work for world family order. Now you can see like we got, many of us got connected to online workshops. Is it? we are helping each other, holding hands of each other. Now, a nucleation process has started in many corners of the society, in many families of the society, not less than, I'll say, thousand families. Now, every family is working to be living with you know, happiness and prosperity. So, this family order, it's not that it's a kind of 
uh, a, a simple sequential process so that nucleation is taking place in various uh, pockets and so many families are getting orderly so by dint of which so many family clusters are getting orderly so you can see how it propagates isn't it and when it becomes this understanding becomes a part of education system health system production system then the implications are far more wide and deep so it's not a very far fetched solution i'll say universal human order it's only that we have to enter into the right process in place of assuming we have to go for knowing we have to work for knowing then this whole process uh, gets naturally actualized so as discussed in the previous lectures the right understanding provides us the vision for a holistic development and humane society that is the universal human order and such a model will necessitate the visualization and development of appropriate technologies production systems and management models which will cater to the fulfillment of such a vision so we'll discuss some of the details here in this lecture so in the present times there is a great zeal for the development and adoption of innovative technologies and systems tools techniques and models which are claimed for the betterment of society more and more sophistication and complexity are being added and we can see how the technologies are getting more and more complex earlier we were working with macro technologies then we started working with meso on meso scale then we started working with micro scale then we started working with nano scale and then pico scale now femto scale we are not talking about technology at the level of 10 to the minus 15 no? measurement scale so the on one hand miniaturization is taking place large gadgets are becoming small and small on the other hand we are able to go to the moon we are able to explore the universe so the technologies are becoming sophisticated more and more complex more and more intense the effort is on isn't it however most of the effort is going on under the influence of the dominant world view which is limited to materialistic perception and that assumes that human being is merely the body happiness is nothing but physical facility things like this so needless to say that the holistic world view is missing in such efforts and as a result both the structure as well as the use or misuse of these innovations is often proving to be counterproductive contrary to the long term human welfare and we can see this russia ukraine war started in february last year if i recollect properly it has been going on and on every day we switch on the tv and we find that news coming up russia hit so many points in ukraine ukraine hit back on so many points in russia recently i learned that now russia is taking soldiers from other countries somewhat third world countries isn't it and they are fighting and might be such situation in europe also so what is happening and you can see the sophistication and the cost of the weapons that are being used now but still neither russia is able to uh, win the war nor ukraine is able to win the war and it has become a kind of global warfare and not a single day is passing when there is no war on this planet it's very kind of amusing thing to see or i'll say uh, puzzling thing to see that with so much of sophistication and education and you know so called development there is not a single day when there is no war on the planet and the situation keeps on getting tense and tense recently we had the war that got started in israel and hamas and now there is a news that other countries are also getting involved so what is happening ultimately we are not able to see the long term human welfare so therefore there is a strong need to develop technologies and systems with holistic objectives governed by right understanding to render them conducive to sustainable human welfare through human society i hope you all agree to this are you able to see this you can respond in the chat box you can respond in the chat box nice so this is somewhat very strange to see that not a single day is passing when there is no war on this planet 
and what we are doing what we are aiming for is not very clear in the current state of society now if you look at the recent advances in technology so the industrial revolutions have been taking place and there are four phases which are generally listed so the first industrial revolution took place around 1760 uh so there was discovery of coal and its mass extraction and steam became the source of power and by that we developed the steam engine and steam engines were able to drive trains they were able to drive factories so mass production started and you can see a huge change in the socio economic structure took place when the masses were converted into laborers and then the imperialism started Uh, people from europe started moving to other uh, continents and uh, making colonies there and then gradually trying to rule the other parts of the planet then there was shift from agriculture to industry lot of mechanization was there in all sectors so this was one major phase of uh, revolution in the industry the next phase came when there was discovery of electricity gas and oil so this made the technology or the machines much more sophisticated so uh, the steam power had its own limitations now uh, by virtue of electricity gas and oil the energy was easily available to the households and small factories also and then there was invention of the internal combustion engine because the internal combustion engine could work on gas and oil and then there was development in that communication technology also with telegraph and later the telephone and since the ic engines came so the planes and cars also came into picture so there was a lot of transformation in the modes of transportation communication the third industrial revolution took place around 1969 when the plc was invented programmable logic controller and that was a digital electronics revolution that started in 1969 and gradually the use of computers become a common thing robots started replacing human beings in the factories and there was start of automation and also the information age is uh, said to be started around that time during the third industrial revolution now it is the time of fourth industrial revolution which is said to start around 2000 like there is another timeline that is given as 2016 you know, when iot and other technology also came into picture but generally it is said that after 2000 this fourth industrial revolution started and then there was internet revolution if you remember uh, like uh, what the late 90s the windows came and earlier when internet was used it was only in terms of text and that was on a dos platform now the windows platform was there so it became much more functional and we can see how we have been utilizing the internet nowadays every day most of the work is getting done in industry as well as academia on internet so a kind of internet revolution has taken place and then application of information and communication technologies to industry started there was also a shift to renewable energy such as solar wind and geothermal this is another thing that was absorbed so in the third industrial revolution the nuclear power had come in as a, another source of power and the renewable sources of energy were there earlier also but in the fourth industrial revolution there has been much more emphasis in india also we can see like when i went to cochin where dipesh bhaiya sunil bhaiya are there so i could see that the whole airport is working on solar panels and now more and more airports are being designed in such a way that they work on solar panels and now there are solar farms people are purchasing land and just uh, putting solar panels there to harvest energy so energy harvesting is another term that is now being used and technologies like artificial intelligence advanced robotics internet of things machine learning deep learning all those things have come into picture isn't it we all are acquainted with this many of us might be expert in this so we can see how the technology has evolved now the question is what to do with this technology is it a kind of boon or a bane what to say about the industrial revolution has it created problems on the planet or given more and more solutions so you'll see that it all boils down to our right utilization of the technology it boils down to our own level of understanding isn't it we can fight we can 
create more devastating wars with the technologies or we can utilize this for the human welfare. Now, when you talk about the physical facilities, we can see that there are only three purposes of physical facilities to nurture the body, to protect the body, and to rightly utilize the body. Now, in terms of rightly utilizing the body, there is a need for transportation, television, and telecommunication. These are three purposes in which we through which we connect to the society through transportation, through television, and through telecommunication. The industrial revolutions have provided new technologies for production, protection, and right utilization of physical facilities. This is something that we can see. You know, we all are sitting with either mobile phones or laptops or computers and working on internet. And we can so smoothly connect with each other, isn't it? So the technologies can be rightly utilized for the fulfillment of human goals, working in all the dimensions of society and working for universal human order from family order to the world family order. Now see, when I'm sitting in my house and uh, saying something from my side, doesn't matter whether the person on the other side is sitting in UP or south of India or some other part of the planet, maybe Europe or US, doesn't matter at all. Isn't it? The same time it is taking for the signal to get, almost same time to get transmitted. And we are very much connected. So if we can rightly utilize the mode for you know, uh, television and telecommunication, I'll say. The good thing is that after the internet has come and we are getting more and more bandwidth and internet is being utilized more and more. So the need for transportation has come down. So it is saving oil, gas, coal, even uh, mineral ores, you know, because all those things are not to be used now for communication. You can sit in one place and communicate to somebody else in another part of the planet without moving there. So, of course, it has cut down the exploitation of resources a lot. Earlier, I do remember that when we had a board of studies meeting, then there was so much of logistics involved. You have to arrange for boarding and lodging of all the members of the BOS. It was so costly. People are coming from distant places. You have to arrange for their flight, their stay. So many people had to get involved and there will always be some complaint or the other that this thing was not taken care of properly and that thing was not taken care of properly. And now when you have to do some BOS meeting, uh, it happens just, <laughs> you say, by fluke. You know, there's a meeting, you just call the meeting, people get connected on some platform, Zoom or Google Meet or something. And a very good discussion takes place also. What you are saying is there in front of everybody. You are able to see everybody's face also, their expressions also. And the meeting gets over. So you can see how much time, energy, money, resources it has saved. Isn't it? So this is a good utilization of the technology that we can see. So how we have been utilizing technology and how we can further utilize it for value-based education. So we are of course conducting workshops, meetings with the use of computers, projectors, software, internet. So this we have been doing. When we started conducting workshops earlier, it was on a blackboard with a white chalk. Then there was a whiteboard with a black or blue marker. And then the projector came in. We prepared PPTs and the projector was there and the uh, people were sitting in one room and then discussing. And then this internet got in use and then sitting in our own houses, we are able to conduct workshops for you know, so many people at the same time. So of course, there is so much of a scope with this technology. It has cut down the transportation a lot. You know, the logistics have come down. Arranging for transportation, fooding, and all those things has come down. And we are able to very easily connect and so regularly connect with each other. We can see that the number of people who are now gradually developing as resource persons uh, has gone up, isn't it? So this is a very good development. We are able to reach long distances and remote locations also. So long as the internet is there or the network is there, it is well and good. We can connect with anyone. We are able to reach a wide range of people, all strata of people we are able to reach so easily. Material for education is available online. You just have to be serious about it and then you can get to know so many things. <clears throat> a constant exploration can continue. Then there's better coordination of activities through the internet. We are all aware of this. We have been doing this. Now going further, we can also have global conferences. 
isn't it? We can have global conferences. They can be organized for the promotion of value-based education. So it could be possible that we divide the whole planet into three time zones and we have round the clock you know, conference taking place. <laughs> so maybe uh, some of us are taking care of the uh, daytime, some of us are taking care of the sessions in the night, some are taking care of the session in the morning. So these things like that. And a good thing is that which we are presently cut off from, so many good people are doing good things across the planet. We are not aware, we are not in touch. So can there be some mechanism by which good people across the planet can come closer? They can talk, they can dialogue, they can share their uh, best practices, they can share their achievements, they can share their success stories, they can share their feelings, how we can be a help to each other making this whole world a family. And you can look at it that the modern day technologies are quite apt for it. They can be a good help in this direction. Only that we have to utilize them and we have to prepare ourselves for that. Similarly, artificial intelligence, which is on the rise nowadays, can be utilized so well for documentation, analysis, dissemination of information. If you look at YouTube now, you can see that if some session is being conducted in English, it is very easily able to transcript the whole thing. And when you are sharing the transcript with someone, then what you are saying comes very raw to the other person and other person is able to depend on it. Yeah. Now this generative AI, chat GPT is one example of that generative AI. So uh, we can usually use it for documentation. Even uh, like if somebody wants to make a gist in 100 words of all that I have shared in this session, one can do within seconds with the use of AI. We can analyze the data, we can disseminate information, and we have to further utilize uh, this technology for making chatbots, for making <clears throat> apps, so that it can be a very uh, commonly available help to each and everyone. For example, let's say somebody is feeling depressed and he or she just writes a message that I am feeling depressed, what to do? And that chatbot, helps one get resolved on the basis of these uh, inputs that we are getting, isn't it? So that is also possible. We can have apps which guide us what to do in difficult situations of life. Now the way we are sharing the morning sessions, our issues, and <clears throat> few people are able to, let's say, respond today, but there could be apps, there could be chatbots, there could be mechanisms isn't it through which we can get the solution for example if somebody is worried about say the loss in the stock market and is very tensed feeling like committing suicide and there could be some app or chatbot which guides the person that see you were not able to make the need for physical facilities rightly so first of all go and make the make out the need for facilities rightly isn't it and the person may get resolved a student is preparing for iit je getting very tensed okay and the chat bot opens the three columns what do you want to become what do you want to do or get and what do you want to be so you want to be essentially happy so why are you getting unhappy and there are so many ways to get or do something to be happy isn't it so why only depend on one channel and things like this so you can see that the solution comes out very naturally if we are able to write it like these technologies I hope uh, you are all able to see this. You can comment in the chat box. So these are multiple right utilization modes of technology that we can go for. Nice, Bhaiya. Nice. Nice, Didi. So going further, presently we are only working in the dimension of education and there also higher technical education. From higher technical education, we have to expand to higher education. From higher education, we have to expand to higher secondary, then secondary, then primary. And even we, in, we have to go to the Angan bodies, the ICDS, Integrated Child Development Scheme, where the newly born is there in the village. The mother is there and the mother has to be guided properly. The newly born has to be guided properly, taken care of properly. Can we reach there? So on one hand, we have to move vertically. 
like top to bottom, bottom to top. So where technology has so much of use, we can conduct sessions for 10,000 people, 1 lakh people at a time, given the proper bandwidth and the proper techniques to make people interact with us, isn't it? So vertically, up and down, we can move. And at the same time, we can integrate horizontally. We can expand to the whole of world using the technology. So much of the scope is there. Only that we have to make the right utilization and we have to skill ourselves and we have to have the values embedded in us. Unless that is there, we again start for looking for, we start looking for happiness through sensation or through feelings that we get from others and the source of happiness remains outside and ultimately uh, we are not able to reach anywhere. So at the core is my own self-observation, self-exploration, self-evaluation. And in expression, we can utilize the technologies to such a vast and deep extent, isn't it? Nice. And now presently we are only working the dimension of education. We started conducting workshop in the jails also, which is the dimension of justice. We can work in health dimension also, as Rajul Bhiva was mentioning, that we conducted two workshops for uh, Ayurveda students. Uh, in the month of February, we had conducted one session on health also. We have developed a full-fledged course on health. And that is now a part of the minor degree program also. We can see that so many government hospitals are there. But again, there is so much of rush of sick people. People falling sick. Why? Because they lack the feeling of self-regulation. So can we have a mechanism by the use of technology where we can develop more and more self-regulation in them? They become more and more regulated. They become aware of what to uh, eat and what not to eat, how to regulate the body, how to see the body as an instrument and not as a tool for happiness. Similarly, we can work in dimension of production work. The information can be disseminated. People can be developed. They can be guided. Similarly, justice and preservation, exchange and storage. And we can see how we are utilizing the apps now for exchange. Earlier, we had to carry wallets with money. Now we have to carry just on mobile phone. Isn't it? it is safe and secure also to some extent. And then just by transfer of numbers, the exchange takes place. Storage also has got changed. Only that if I have the right understanding, I can properly participate in every dimension and utilize the technology as the resources also properly. So, so much of scope is there. You have to only get to see how we can utilize them correctly. So we have to evolve a holistic criteria for evaluation. So when so many gadgets are there, technologies are there, apps are there, instruments are there, machines are there. So how to make the right selection? How to say which is desirable, which is not desirable? So there has to be certain guidelines. So one guideline is that it has to be catering to the appropriate needs and lifestyles. You have to make out our needs correctly, isn't it? Only for nurturing, protecting and utilizing the body, not otherwise. Similarly, it has to be eco-friendly, utilizing the cyclic and uh, cyclic process and renewable methods and materials and the process has to be mutually enriching enriching the human being as well as the rest of nature then it has to be people friendly ensuring justice ensuring self-development and mutual fulfillment among the human beings at the same time in terms of uh, artistic value and utility value it has to be user friendly it has to be safe, economical, enhancing human capability. So all those features can be added up. In addition, these have to promote local self-sufficiency and optimal utilization of local resources and expertise. Now you can see one major problem that we are facing today is migration. In some sense, it has been contributing also to some extent, but it has created a huge lot of problems also because we are able to see huge areas getting depleted of population because there is lack of employment, there is lack of justice, there is lack of uh, basic amenities. And in some areas, we have so much of population that the intensity has gone up much, much above what could be expected. And then there is scarcity of again resources here. In the metro cities, we can see scarcity of water, scarcity of space for living, and so much of rush on the roads. So we have to promote local self-sufficiency and optimal utilization of the local resources and expertise also. 
Now, in the light of these uh, broad criteria, specific criteria for evaluation can be broadly defined in the area of technologies, production systems, and management models. Now, so going further, we can look at the criteria for technology. So it has to be catering to real human needs of both the self as well as the body. Then it has to be compatible with natural systems and cycles. It has to facilitate effective utilization of human body, animals, plants, and other natural materials also. So it is so happening that on one hand, we are getting better and better user experience out of the designs that we are making. But on the other hand, people are getting lazier and lazier. Nowadays, an Alexa, even if you have to switch on the TV, you ask the Alexa to switch on the TV. Don't get down the sofa and go to switch on the TV. So we have to also see that the body needs to do work, isn't it? So effective utilization of the human body has to be there. That manual labor is also required for good health. Even we can see how we can utilize the animals without exploiting them how we can utilize the plants and other natural materials because for example when we go for nuclear power it is another kind of pollution resource depletion that is taking place on the planet so if we can use uh, plants and you know, we can extract oil from plants and utilize it we can make fibers out of plants and utilize it for materials so that is also a possibility which we have to look into then we have to have safe, user-friendly, and conducive to health practices. So earlier, if you see, the health was not such a big issue. But it has presently become the disease. Then a common information that he or she had. so frequent earlier it has become a common thing now why is it happening why people are getting heart attack why are they are getting diabetes or things like that so we have to see how the technology can be conducive to health also then low cost energy efficient gadgets and tools have to be developed uh, the instruments or the machines have to be producible with local resources and even the products have to be producible with local resources and expertise as far as possible so, for example, if you visit Assam, you will see that in Assam, uh, almost in every family, if you go to the rural areas, two things are very commonly grown. One is paddy and the other is bamboos. So paddy is used for food, bamboo is used for making houses and other things. You know? So it is such a commonly available material, even renewable, if marriage takes place in the family and one new family member is there. No issues, you just have to add few more panels of bamboos and the house gets extended, isn't it? So that kind of possibility is also there. If the justice is ensured, if the fearlessness is ensured, then we'll not have to invest so much of, for construction, so much of material, technology, energy, time, resources for construction. So you have to look into these issues also. Enhancing human interaction and cooperation. So it's not that every person will be sitting with a mobile and you know, looking at reels. You have to see how the human interaction can go up. In a department, how can people more interact more and more? In a colony or a village, how people can interact more and more? Then it has to promote decentralization. For example, if you look at the need for nurturing the body, protecting the body, then it can be completely decentralized. If the satellite does not have to be produced in every village, but the food and clothes and houses can be produced in every village, isn't it? It was also a common scene earlier. It has got somewhat disturbed now, otherwise it was happening earlier also. Then enhanced durability, life cycle and recyclability of products. But presently, if you see, use and throw has become a common way of life. You bring some gadget and then it lies for three years and then it has to be thrown off. The cars have to be discarded every 10 years. Isn't it? So you have to see how we can enhance the durability, how we can enhance the life cycle, and how we can recycle the products. So such technologies which are conducive to these criteria are more to be welcomed, more to be enhanced and developed. Now we talk about production systems. Then in determining the type of production systems, the key questions that have to be addressed are like what to produce, how to produce, 
for whom to produce, how much to produce. Now, if we just कुमार भैया नमस्ते साउथ ऑफ़ द मीटिंग है आई थिंक भैया जी या गॉड डिस्कनेक्टेड जी 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 द साइड इज़ विजिबल ना जी भैया सो वी कैन सी सिंस वी आर नॉट क्लियर अबाउट व्हाट टू प्रोड्यूस हाउ टू प्रोड्यूस ना हाउ मच टू प्रोड्यूस फॉर हूम टू प्रोड्यूस वन वन ना कंप्लीट नेशन और वन कंप्लीट कॉन्टिनेंट इज गेटिंग एक्सप्लॉयटेड वी आर एबल टू सी दिस हाउ द थर्ड वर्ल्ड कंट्रीज आर गेटिंग एक्सप्लॉयटेड सो दीज क्वेश्चन और इश्यूज हैव बीन डिस्कस्ड फाइल स्टडिंग द हार्म इन दोसाइटी ऑल्सो टू सम एक्सटेंट वी कुड सी हाउ इन प्लेस ऑफ फुलफिलिंग द ह्यूमन गोल वी आर है ना कमिटिंग मिस्टेक्स so we have to fulfill the human goal and through different dimension of the societal system for so the needs are to be characterized in consonance with the comprehensive human goal and they have to be fulfilled through human systems defined there and all these will be decided in context of availability of the local natural resources and expertise to cater to the needs of the people for any given communities in fact i'll say that we also start thinking in terms of producing something in our houses maybe vegetables we can grow Maybe we can make some household products, which we can share with the community. So we have to see how the local expertise, local resources, can be better utilized. So if you talk about the specific criteria, then the optimal and efficient utilization of local resources and expertise, including human beings, animals, air, solar, land, water. other bio and mineral resources can be optimally utilized the economic viability and sustainability has to be looked into now presently if you look at the economics of the nations in the world we can see almost every country is in debt every country is lending money to the other countries and every country is in debt what kind of sustainability it is economic sustainability or viability it is very strange to explain how can every country be in debt you know the thing the way the whole economics is moving now you can just imagine the priority for local consumption why should we get fruits from australia or europe you know why can't we grow our own fruits and consume and whatever we are growing here why can't it be utilized maybe if you are able to grow carrot here in our local area that is a good source of vitamin why to go for vitamin for some from some other fruit <coughs> matching the pattern of production with the availability of producibility availability or producibility in the local environment and the pattern of consumption has to be looked into so why to eat one kind of fruit round the year the fruits grow according to the seasons so what is generally said in naturopathy is that you consume regional and seasonal things they are the best uh there is one video also where uh the person uh explores all the options for food what people consume across the world and the final conclusion is that the home cooked food is the best it may not be having those many minerals or rich resources which people are craving for but if it is home cooked it has no preservative readily made you are able to depend on the quality of food and it is good for health also for the pattern of consumption you know has to be also looked into the decentralized systems capable of meaningful employment of people in the community now when we are having more and more startups we are having better technologies 
systems. So we have to see that people in my vicinity should not get unemployed because of that. So why not train these people in my neighborhood so that they are able to utilize the technology? I remember that one person came to give a presentation on one startup in our college and she was mentoring uh, a project where uh, the children were developing an app for car cleaning. And that lady was saying that presently the cost of car cleaning is only rupees 400 in NCR. And if this app gets successful, it will charge 1200 rupees and also replace all the car cleaners. I did not say anything at the moment, but I said that what kind of app or startup is it? What kind of app or startup is it? It is going to replace our car cleaners. Why not train them so that they can better clean the cars? And you take one part of the profit, that would be better. So how to create employment for people in my vicinity? Facilitating production by mass is not mass production at centralized mode, isn't it? So it is generally said that if every hand has a job and the job is properly paid, there will be less and less struggle and exploitation in the society. But what we are doing, we are not providing job to every hand and we are also not paying it properly that's why there is so much of strife struggle in the society promoting individual creativity and sense of accomplishment now let's say if i am only producing one nut or bolt which is going to be applicable in one complete machine i do not get that sense of accomplishment so if i am doing something which can be a complete product in itself and i am doing it locally so it gives a different sense of accomplishment. If you look at the local uh, uh, skills that have got evolved, so people are able to make the complete product, some furniture, maybe uh, some hardware product. If you will go to uh, this uh, one district, one product uh, uh, Mela, then you can see there that artisans are coming and they are making their own products. It could be linen, it could be some artifact made of wood, or some other material, they are making complete products. So that also can be assisted. I'm not saying that every person has to make the complete product. Not every person can make the aeroplane. Aeroplane is also required. But we have to assist such local artisans also. That has to be looked into. Using people friendly and eco friendly technologies, ensuring requisite quality and quantity of production. Then harnessing, recycling, conservation, and reuse of use possibilities. So it is generally said that recycle, reduce, and reuse, isn't it? So conservation again means that you reduce and also preserve whatever resources that you are using. Then safe and conducive to the health of persons involved in production as well as others. And ultimately it should be conducive for cell development because we are able to see that the body or physical facilities are merely an instrument at the core is the development of the self. Probably you are sharing the screen. G. Then similarly, we can develop criteria for management. So primarily management models are to be relationship based, cooperative and ensuring justice in terms of mutual fulfillment and not coercive or exploitative. In specifically the whole unit working as a well-knit family. Let's say we are working in a college. So can we look at the college, all the staff in the college as a family member? Then, even if somebody is working as a four, class four employee, somebody is working as a security guard, we are able to see the relationship with the person. We are able to feel for the other. If this person is getting paid so less, how will his family survive? How can I assist in ensuring prosperity in this family? How I can assist in educating the child of that person? How I can assist in ensuring justice with this person? So that kind of feeling and Presently, those things are not being addressed in management. In management, we are treating human being merely as a resource for profit making. If you look at the HR techniques, you know, people are treating as if like people generally doubt the HR people because they are always spying upon you. What is your next goal? What is your next program? Are you going to continue with this organization or leave the job? So things like that. In place of that, can we get uh, the feeling of uh, being related, can we have that affection? 
presently the chairpersons are doubting the management and the faculty the faculty and management are doubting the chairpersons and each one is treating the other person only as a mere source of income the faculty might be feeling that i am here in this college because it is fetching income for my family the chairperson feels that this person has come to only fetch money from me okay so make him work as much as possible so we are not able to have that empathy we are not able to have that close knit family feeling so can we think in those terms can the management models be like that then it has to be cooperative motivational and mutually fulfilling that empathy you know that being able to connect with the other motivate the other fulfill the other ensuring correct appraisal of human labor and skills why there is so much of difference between a white collar and a blue collar job why can't we respect everybody why can't we make the correct appraisal of the person who is working with hands also the skills of the person also then targeting employer employee satisfaction as well as customer satisfaction and not merely profit maximization we will also see that in general also people who are looking at the satisfaction of people are able to survive better as an industry now you see that edutech is a new kind of field where startups are coming there is one startup which entered into this edutech and it tried to maximize profit by all means now it also entered into the forbes list at some point of time and now it has come to the stage where it is completely you know uh, bankrupt not even able to pay the salary of the employees why is it happening because the whole motivation is for profit it is not for satisfaction of the people employees our customers or consumers or the children who are getting educated sharing our responsibility and participatory mode of management can we sit together and dialogue and discuss in the organization now all these approaches are missing in the current syllabus for management continuous value addition self evolution of the persons involved in fact in my college i generally tell the uh, uh, employee that see for example you are a sweeper so you have done your job in the first 3 hours of the day and then you will again get involved after lunch time so during this whole period what are you doing why don't you learn some skill why don't you attend some workshop on human values why don't you try to develop your understanding by other means also if you feel that that may help so why to waste time utilize it so that you are able to have a better life for you effectively in integrating individual competencies and complementarity ab here next slide please so if you make an appraisal of the prevailing systems you can see that the present day systems have been largely developed under the influence of the dominant world view and that is materialistic perception only considering happiness to be nothing but uh, a sensation or an influence from outside assuming human beings to be the body and you know, money to be the goal of life and things like that this has caused minimes of resource depletion on one hand and environmental degradation manifesting in the form of pollution and global warming on the other hand the other undesirable characteristics of modern day technologies are like they include their decentralized configuration promotion of wastefulness so much of waste so much of waste if you see now discarding of waste has become a big problem isn't it oils are getting thrown in the oceans and the fish are dying in the ocean because this discarding of oil has become a huge problem discarding of mineral resources or electronic waste or plastic garbage in the cities it has become a huge problem excessive transportation and substitution of human animal and other natural resources now as we are saying that if you utilize rightly utilize internet and such facilities we can cut down on the transportation a lot in fact during the pandemic this work from home started and if we meaningfully utilize this work from home it can save a lot of material time energy money everything but the problem was that when people were working from home they were not having ethical conduct and that's why the company started calling them to the company otherwise presently also many companies are still making their employees work from home but if that ethical part is taken care of people sitting in remote places can work for any kind of company in any corner of the world and that will save on transportation that will save on uh, huge costs that are going to be incurred when people move to cities so that has to be looked into 
then substitution of human animal and other natural resources by man made gadgets machines and materials isn't it we do not have so much of material also now you can see that coal is almost on the verge of getting completely depleted iron manganese these are also like you know on the verge of getting depleted things like this now presently people have got lithium when petroleum is getting depleted but lithium will also have its limits then it has given a lower priority or even no priority to human development and human fulfillment as far as human consciousness is concerned if you talk about such things in the corporate world people do not feel interested because they feel that this is not their uh, job this is not their concern yeah of course since there is a rule that companies have to go for csr they are working something for the corporate social responsibilities but that has not become the focus we can also learn from the systems in the nature and traditional practices like the water harvesting and storage and utilization systems through ponds other artifacts like bunds could be there traditional agricultural practices are there from which we can learn the grain storage and food preservation practices we can learn from there systems of sharing food and shelter prevalent in the social and religious institution for example langar system is there prevalent in punjab so in punjab will not find a single beggar you will not find a, any person dying of hunger so society has developed this kind of system traditional local remedies and healthcare techniques then we have yoga ayurved naturopathy based and other traditional healthcare systems if we properly follow them in fact if you look at the program for self regulation i find it so meaningful for me that i have to first take care of you know nurturing the body like ahar vihar and proper you know upkeep of the body then i have to go for shram and vyayam labor and exercise then i have to go for asana and pranayam regulating my breath and postures and then finally if it doesn't work then i have to go for medicines it works so well if that kind of understanding is developed in the people and they are able to take care of uh, the facilities properly they will naturally be healthy family based rural enterprises so earlier we'll see that there used to be a tradition like there would be some family which has been following a particular ayurvedic practice through generations it is preserving that practice some people are working on let's say some metal you know uh, processing technique and they are doing it for ages some families have been making locks so only that if we are able to ensure the right understanding right feeling in them ensure justice with them then those techniques and practices will survive there was a jajmani system also a relationship based village system to ensure rural self sufficiency now something that is being said with the jajmani system is that there was a caste system also associated with that so if you can rule out the differentiation from there and apply the jajmani system properly then it can be a big help for the society then rural craft and artisanal practices are there which have to be preserved and nurtured also ji bhaiya next slide so we can visualize the holistic model and we can work towards it so it is high time that we start working for actualization of the model of human order at the village level a holistic model a gram swaraj model you know making the whole world a family in the light of right understanding and several groups of people have started working in this direction seriously so that's what we are mentioning that if we utilize the communication channels properly we can get to know about lakhs of people across the world who are working meaningfully in this direction so as a result main technology and systems have evolved through even though the full scale demonstration of such alternative ways is not there it is yet to emerge and there needs to be an increasing and widespread thrust to evolve holistic technologies and systems through dedicated r&d efforts working within the framework of right understanding now we can see that there is ample scope for each one of us as a faculty to work on such projects to offer projects to the students so that they can work on it and we'll present some details about such a holistic community model each one of us can try to work out further details and come up with a working model ji bhaiya next slide bhaiya so some topics for case studies could be like we can have renewable and decentralized energy technologies like biomass based energy conservation systems gadgets and implements to facilitate efficient utilization of human muscle power and animal drought power 
decentralized wind power now this wind power is also being utilized in many places across the country micro hydel electromechanical power generation systems then systems for water conservation and water share management for efficient utilization of the rain water and eco restoration we'll see that in nac also there are points as, you know, given for this if you are able to utilize the Presentation. Bhagwan Singh Bhaiya is there, who has been working on organic and natural farming techniques. So people are already working for it. Only that it has to be enhanced. Eco sanitation techniques, like the Sulab Sochale, for a small scale decentralized sewage disposal, waste water recycling, <clears throat> low cost and energy efficient technologies for small scale production systems, and then humanistic organizational and management models. So there is ample scope, and there is ample material to study also. मेरी आवाज रुक गई थी क्या वॉज आई ऑडिबल नाउ यूर ऑडिबल भैया इन बिटवीन फॉर अ मिनट इट वॉज नॉट देर अच्छा अच्छा सो लेट मी गो टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड अगेन भैया द प्रीवियस स्लाइड या सो दीज आर सम टॉपिक्स फॉर केस स्टडीज एंड एज अ फैकल्टी वी कैन ऑफर प्रोजेक्ट ऑन दीज टॉपिक्स सो आई जस्ट गो थ्रू दैट आई विल रीड इट वंस अगेन सो For example, renewable and decentralized energy technologies. So we can help the students work on biomass, like biomass produces biodiesel. There is ample research going on for biodiesel also. We can have gadgets and implements to facilitate efficient utilization of the human muscle power and animal draught power. In place of making people lazy, we have to ha see how their muscle power can be further utilized. Decentralized wind power. It is gradually becoming popular in India also. the micro hydel electromechanical power generation system these are uh, quite to be seen in uttaranchal and other uh, mountain regions systems for water conservation and water share management water share management has been very meaningfully implemented in uh, like this uh, uh, mp and you know uh, the neighboring state so in some parts of the country it has been very meaningfully implemented the watershed management chatisgarh and then water conservation it is something to be done even the city is very seriously now technologies and architecture promoting green building materials and energy conservation yeah organic and natural farming techniques so i was mentioning that sunil bhaiya has been promoting his students to work on sustainable material and sustainable construction techniques Bhagwan Singh Bhaiya has been working on natural farming techniques, eco sanitation techniques like Sulab Sochale can be promoted. Low cost and energy efficient technologies for small scale production systems can be further enhanced, and humanistic organizational or management models can be further enhanced. So these all possibilities are there. It, the list can be still be still be you know made longer, and we can see how we can be a help in developing and promoting such technologies. G. नेक्स्ट स्लाइड भैया सो टू सम इट ऑल सो वी टॉक अबाउट ह्यूमन गोल्स सो देयर हैज टू बी क्लैरिटी ऑफ ह्यूमन गोल्स एट द बेस देन वी हैव टू इवॉल्व सिस्टम्स फॉर हार्मन इन सोसाइटी एंड देन वी हैव टू प्लान वेरियस स्टेप्स ऑफ ह्यूमन ऑर्डर वी आल्सो टॉक अबाउट द रीसेंट डेवलपमेंट्स इन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड देयर राइट यूटिलाइजेशन एंड बेस्ड ऑन राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द गाइडलाइंस क्राइटेरिया एग्जांपल्स एंड केस स्टडीज अबाउट holistic technologies production systems and management models can be worked out and we can also learn from the systems in nature and the traditional practices to evolve a holistic model for living ensuring harmony at all levels so this was all from my side now we can take up questions if time permits ji yeah. 